Welcome everyone to the second session of the GitLab Hackathon. Um, I'm thrilled to be joined here by Tony Klass from the GEO team. Uh, he's going to be uh, doing an introduction on the um, on the GT, uh, on the GDK, the GitLab uh, Development Kit, um, to essentially tell us uh, how to get started, how to do your first uh, merge proposal, um, and how to um, essentially make sure that you've got all the tools required to um, to, to run your code. Um, he'll be doing uh, a live session, uh, and in the end, we will have some time for questions. If you have any more questions, you can always uh, ask them on gitter.im slash GitLab HQ slash uh, community, and we'll be happy to, to answer them. Um, and with that, uh, Tone, I'll, um, let you, I'll let you take the stage. Yeah, good morning or good afternoon or, or whatever, where you are. Uh, welcome to the session. Uh, I'm going to quickly try to make you, uh, set, set you up with GDK and show you how easy it should be to uh, work with GDK. So I'll be sharing my screen to just show you that. Okay, uh, normally you, you would be able to see my screen showing the welcome page of the GitLab development kit. Uh, That's good. So let's just head over to the readme uh, and see how to use it. Um, basically there are two steps. Uh, first you need to prepare your computer. Um, and this means you have to install a bunch of dependencies. Uh, we have documentation on very various uh, Operating systems like OS X, it's so weird that it's OS X, you may get Mac OS or whatever, and also different Linux uh, Linux distributions, and I'm not sure about uh, Windows. I don't think that's, oh, it's experimental to do that with a subsystem for Windows. Uh, there are different setups for all those. Um, uh, we have, uh, among the team, we have different people using different OSs, so uh, most of them should be supported really good. Um, next up is to set up your GDK. Um, and this is basically just a few commands to get you started. So I have to install the gem uh, that we are using to use uh, for the GitLab development kit. And it's basically just a gem. So when you have installed your, when you have you prepared your computer, you make sure you have uh, Ruby installed. And with Ruby installed, you can easily install the gem. Um, so this would be the basic command to install just any GDK. Um, if you want uh, to specify the directory where you want the GDK to be, then you can use this command. So I'll copy that, I'll make just a demo directory and go there and create my GDK CE for, to uh, develop on GitLab CE. After that, you need to go in there I'm not sure that might be documented not too good. And um, what you will do then is um, to clone the GitLab CE project for yourself. And we, when you want to contribute, you have to fork the GitLab CE project. So if you go to the GitLab CE project um, over here, you can press the fork button. Select for which user you want to create a fork, and then GitLab will create the fork on your name. So now, Tone GitLab CE will be created. And that would, would be the, the repository you want uh, to push your code to when you've done uh, with your GD, GDK, uh, when, with your changes you've made. Uh, for the lack like, of, for the purpose of demonstration, I'm going to use a quick uh, uh, variant of GDK install. And we'll just using a, um, a cloning from a local directory. So that, that avoids me from cloning from the web, which is from the local directory is much more faster. But usually you will just use this command to run it from your fork. So this takes a while. So let's not wait on that for this moment. So it does run uh, the installation. For some reason, this is complaining about my Ruby version not being correct. I think we have a bug there that was recently introduced, but we can skip it for now. Um, I'll be working on this later this week, I guess. And what it does, it sets up 
like everything, all the services you need for your GitLab to run. So it will prepare this part, it will prepare your GitLab.yaml uh, configuration file uh, with some same defaults. It will install all the gems it needs for GitLab CE. Uh, after that, it will also install the NPM dependencies using Yarn. Uh, and at this moment, it's compiling um, the internationalization, internationalization files for all the different languages, which uh, uh, I think we have an, uh, another session about internationalization later, later on. So uh, if you're in interested in that, please join that. And it will also set up other dependencies like Workhorse, which is basically um, some web service we use in between uh, GitLab CE and, <coughs> and the web. But this installation also takes a while um, because yeah, the installation is not that, um, that slow, but later on it will also seed your GDK with some uh, testing data. So you don't have to create everything from scratch. It just provides you with a, with a setup that's not empty. So at this moment, it's, it's creating the database schema. Um, so to skip that, we don't have to wait for that. I have another GDK I have already running here. Um, maybe I'll just be not too fast and just look at the, at the readme first. Um, so yeah, when you're developing in the fork, um, also run this command and this will ensure that you set the upstream remote in your repository. So your origin remote will be your fork and the upstream remote will be the canonical uh, repository that is the official one do you want, which you want to um, eventually have your code merged into. And this, uh, this little command will help you with that. Uh, we're not interested in GitLab uh, Enterprise Edition at this moment, so let's go back to the README now. See, like the uh, uh, meantime, we see that the schema was created and now it's seeding all the data for GDK. So how do you use that GDK? So when this command would be done, it will be finished and uh, you'll be able to use it. So how do you use it? Um, Hmm, it's not in here. I expect it to be here. How do you? It's weird, I expected it to be here, but basically it's very simple. You just, uh, uh, it, will, it will show you how, you, how to, you basically would just run GDK run in the directory uh, G, GDK CE. And then it will sort all services you need, like Postgres, like Giddly, like their background uh, processes. Webpack is also uh, providing you to, um, for your JavaScript dependencies and things like that. And this also takes yeah, like a minute to start because it has some dependencies and it need to load the whole of the Rails, comes, the whole of the Rails app. But when you do, and that's what it also says at the top, it will uh, make your GitLab, local GitLab available, localhost port 3000. So when we go there, you have GitLab running on your local host. And basically it's that easy. So you run GDK install and you just run it and then you're good to go. Um, yeah, the password is not listed here, but you can log in with root and the password is five live which is documented uh, everywhere in the, in the documentation. Uh, and then you'll be able to sign in in your local, oh, I, missed, I made a typo, whatever. And that's it. See, here are some projects, projects that's being seeded by, by this process over here. Um, like a uh, GitLab test, it, so it has the code for GitLab tests, it has uh, some issues and some merge requests. So you have some data you can get started with to test out your uh, local GDK. That's what you need to develop on your GDK. Now, when you want to develop something, 
to start off with the issues. Um, we already shared the link for the accepting merge request issues somewhere already. And basically this is a list of like 500 issues that should be really easy to pick up. Uh, there are a bunch of them over documentation. Um, we have uh, another session later today about uh, contributing to the documentation, which you might be interested if you want just to documentation because it's really easy and you probably don't need GDK to um, to contribute to that. But in this case, we really want to make a code contribution. And I've uh, picked an issue that is hopefully fairly easy to demonstrate. So this is an issue that already also has the accepting merge request um, label. And uh, let me quickly explain what, what the problem is. So there is a slash command or a quick action, sorry, um, that allows you to uh, do copy metadata from one issue to another or to a merge request. And I can demonstrate it over here. Uh, so I have issue one. And I can label it. Oh, we don't have labels yet. Okay, just create some labels first. Generate the default set of labels. Okay, back to the issues. So issue one. Let's label it with a bug. Command is applied. Uh, so when we refresh the page, we'll see it as the label bug. Uh, when we open another issue, so we, we added that issue one. And for say, like it has the same labels, it has to have the same labels as issue one. We can use the slash command copy metadata, list the issue like number one, and comment that. When we refresh the page, you see that the label bug is added because it was also added to label uh, to issue one. Now, in case we want we create a new issue, we say this is a new issue. Copy data. data. You see the copy metadata command is not all the completed. Uh, so that's, that's an indication that it's not working. And when we just type it anyway, we submit the issue. And we see this issue doesn't have any labels. So that's the bug we are trying to fix now. Now you're interested in, um, luckily for us, um, in this issue, uh, Sean McGivern also already posted where um, where the change should be made. If we can find the link again. So over here, oh, here's a link to the code that handles this. So you can see um, the copy made a data uh, command only can be executed when the issuable, so the issue that you're creating is persisted. But because, but because you are um, creating a new issue, issue, it's not persisted yet. So that's why the, that command, the copy made of the, that command is not enabled when you're creating a new issue. But in, in fact, there's no reason that it should uh, be persistent at the time you're creating the issue. So we can basically just remove this line. So let me just get started, copy. As you can see, um, when, when the setup is finished, you also see GDK run is being mentioned also, uh, sorry for my context switch, but um, <laughs> back to my GDK now, that's this GDK that was still seeding, and which has completed. And now at the end, when it has done installing, it says you how to use your GitLab. Uh, you get GDK. So you can just run GDK run or only the database when you just run the test or the app when you want separate processes for the database and the app, which is uh, the Rails app. 
Um, another interesting command here is GDK update, which uh, updates all the dependencies in your GDK uh, setup. So all of all the services, the GitLab rails, everything is being uh, updated, so you can uh, continue when you have been you haven't been using GDK for a while. Sometimes you also need to run GDK reconfigure when you mention after the update some things are going wrong. It might be safe to just run this and then. It will um, update your settings back to how GDK expects them to be. And over here, it's also the login for the root account uh, on your GDK. So let me just uh, move over. Uh, So you want to develop in your GitLab directory. Um, so let me just open the directory in my editor. So over here, this is the code tree of GitLab, uh, the Rails part of it. So if you're familiar with Rails, you recognize the app directory, the library directory, and for specs, and, uh, uh, for tests, your inspect directory. There are other different interesting directories, but we won't focus on those right now. So for chains, um, you probably want to start off creating a new branch for your feature. Just say git uh, branch, hit check out, then B to create a branch, Thorn, um what was the fix? Oh yeah, copy. Meta, data fix. So we created a new branch because we wanted to push that branch later on uh, to GitLab. Then the file was this one. I linked it from the from the issueable with this button. It copies the path to the clipboard. And when we search copy metadata, here is the command, and here is the line. Uh, that was the problem. So it's very easy. Um, there are just one condition. If you can update issue, just um, you're, it's good enough for the condition. I'm not sure why that ever happened, but whatever. So um, I removed the line, and GitLab Rails reloads those uh, those things instantly. So basically, I mean, just when I would create a new issue, oh, this is taking a while. Not sure why, actually. Okay, we're here now. So let's just create another issue. Oh, yeah, this is just line. And let's copy. You see, at this moment already, the, the, the command is completing. You can uh, select the issue you want to copy from and submit the issue. Let's see if that works. We have the bug, bug label. Yay, the bug is fixed already. But we won't accept this change uh, like this because we really like to have some tests on this code. So this is important to have tests on this. So um, for um, so we're in the directory app services quick actions, and basically you would find the same directory structure in spec. So in spec, that's the directory. In your GitLab, you find uh, also the services directory and the quick actions directory. And also here is already a file for the interpret service. Let's see if there's also a test for the copy metadata command. Yes. Oh, seems to be more complicated than I expected, but I don't know, it isn't. So this is a set of shared examples because we are using um, these tests on issues and on merge requests. So we want to reuse those tests 
um, for both things, so we don't need to duplicate the code. Um, let's see if there is something um, that tests if the issue should be persisted. And maybe it's just easier to see if um, the, um, the tests that are present already, do they uh, succeed without, my, without doing changes? So if I do bundle exec, spec, uh, or spec, maybe I just uh, So bundle exec, or spec, uh, spec, services, quick actions, this file. And that's the command you have to run to run a single file for test. And it's a little bit of time to set to start, get started, uh, to load the Rails application, and then it will be running our tests. And because it's the first time is to uh, set up GitLab shell from scratch, and after this also Gately, I think, so it will take like a minute or two. In the meantime, David, are there any questions or something um, you want to get into or other, other participants who want to uh, raise a question or something like that? Um, I haven't seen any questions on GitHub, but I actually have, uh, have a few. Um, so, I mean, first of all, um, I'd be interested to know, I mean, is the GDK something that's uh, used only, only in particular cases? Or does the do, do the whole team, the whole engineering team at GitLab uh, use GitLab when when de uh, sorry use GDK when developing? Well, that's a good question because um, I and and that's very interesting. I think like most of the developers or most people who are write code in GitLab use GDK. So that that's a good thing about it. it it's con constantly maintained because uh, it also has to work for itself. So it's it's not a side project that outside contributors sometimes use and that breaks very often no that's not the case it works because we we use it ourselves cool so yeah i mean that's uh yeah i mean i think that's also good for for contributors uh for contributors as well in, in the sense that i mean not only what you're saying but also they're using consistently what you guys are, are using for uh for daily development that's good um so uh when you got started, you mentioned a couple of uh, commands. Uh, it's essentially uh, GTK install, GTK run, and um, then perhaps GTK update. Are there any other commands that you can think of that might be interesting for uh, developers or for newcomers? Mm. Well, those commands commands do do most of you most of the things you 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 need to do, especially when you're not not a uh, a contributor that, that uses a lot of uh, let me just quickly check which which comments sure. there are so there's like a database you can run geo database with that only applicable for geo when you're and that's in, uh, an enterprise edition feature for premium so you're, you're probably not interested in that uh, Grafana I haven't been using myself on my GDK yet uh, Tin is something else if you want to uh, run uh, run your web servers. Some people use it, but that's not yeah. So most things here are not not that important if you want to contribute like irregularly. Okay, uh, cool. There are some things because GDK uses a make file, and there are a lot of com comments in there. You can run them individually, but most people don't need them so okay cool and then on the so in terms of other things that you might want to run um i mean i didn't quite follow how you run the test the testing here um you run just an individual test or did you run the whole uh, test suit no no i that's it yeah so i i just ran one file 
Okay. So basically, for each file in the application directory of Rails, we also have usually have a file in the spec directory. Um, mm -hmm. So they basically just a one-on-one -on -one, um, mapping. Also for like okay. more front-end stuff, there are also uh, integration tests who, who, okay. who are just using like really pushing buttons on the UI to test if, if the flow is working correctly. Right. Um, and those are more like feature-wise and not so file-based, but that's, that's something else. Uh, the okay. the merge request you, coaches will, will, will help you out if you need it. Okay. There. Cool. But that would essentially run all of the, all, the, all of the tests on that on that file, right? Yeah, this does. So in, in this case, um, I want to use the copy metadata command comment. Yeah. Uh, and you can you you can run a subject subset of uh, of of of, of tests in that file by using the column syntax. Let me just uh, find a good line to do that. Cool. Um, so we have a shared example, and how does it work? Populate issues. All right. Yeah, it doesn't. Test the changes on the on the issuable itself. So it only tests the updates. Uh -huh. Okay. Just copy <laughs> some stuff over. So I see for merge request that's not uh, persisted. So that's not yet created in a database. You cannot use the slash uh, quick action, which totally makes sense because yeah, you cannot merge your merge request that's not created yet. So it has to fail um, when you do that, and it creates it does this by creating an issuable, and it builds that issuable. So it doesn't create it, but it builds it. And the difference between create and build is that it does not um, when with build it does not create it in the database. So I can copy over this line. Um, use like empty commands, and then back to the copy metadata command. Empty command. Behaves like empty. Behaves like. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to quickly search how it's done elsewhere. So execute source issuable. Mm -hmm. So when I go back to my oh, so let me just revert my change at this moment and I think uh, oh. so I added this piece of test and this is the piece I want to test and it's in, at line uh, six uh, eight six three and I can run it like this so specify the line uh, you want to test okay cool behind yeah. the column gotcha and I think at this I hope at this point my test will fail uh, will succeed because I want uh, to have uh, when I do copy metadata um, to do uh, nothing behave like empty command when the issuable is not persisted so when I'm when I'm building a new issue and it's not saved to the database yet, and I'm having the copy metadata command in the in the issuable, 
then it won't do anything. So this succeeds perfect. With my chains, so let me just um, convert it, save this file, go back to the test. Case because I don't specify the issue goal. The source issue goal. Ah, I have to do it like this. So at, uh, I, I did use a copy made of the command, but I didn't specify uh, an issue goal, so it couldn't copy any data. So that's the case. that's the reason why it. Uh, so let me just um, rephrase it again. So I create a source issuable with which has a few labels. I want to run the copy meta data command from that issuable. Uh, in, and I'm uh, doing that on an issue that's not persisted in the database yet. Hmm, and this succeeds. That's very weird. Because it shouldn't. Okay, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm not doing very well here at the moment. <laughs> No worries. I think it's good for people to see the iteration process as well. <laughs> Source issue goal mind is. They do not have milestone ID. It should update the label. I'm not sure why. At least this should also succeed. Hmm. I'm doing exact same than this case for so why it's failed. Collection it can be converted to nil to but got nil. It's probably because my issue is not persisted yet, and that's ah uh, so that the this shared test is not built. Um for that to match array updates. Okay, so it's it's a tough process. So what I'm will be doing now is do a binding dot try here. And that will stop my debugger at this line. Which make it will make which will make it easy for me to see what's happening here. Um, we have got 
some documentation on well a bunch of documentation to be to be honest uh on development which are pretty um extensive so in our doc directory there's a development directory which has a readme and here are a bunch of stuff um, about different features inside the GitLab source code tree, how to do some uh, some debugging, some testing, some writing tests, um, writing markdown, also internationalization, things like that. There's a lot in there. So if you're interested in some topic like uh, database debugging, um, there are uh, different documents about that. And there's also a topic about fry debugging, which is basically the debugger we use uh, for Ruby, for our Ruby on Rails project. And like it says, it's place finding the price somewhere in your code. That's what I just did. I just placed it here inside my test. So now I'm running the test and my debugger did not stop there. What? Ah. Because I added a line also that changed my line where my <laughs> which piece of code I want to run. That's the downside of specifying uh, a code, a line of code in your file. <clears throat> and Pry is very extensive. Uh, you should check out the Pry wiki page because there's really, really, really a lot of uh, features and there are some listed here in this document but if you want to see them all uh, then you you probably want to browse through the wiki of that project so at this point my the errors might be my debug will stop so i can run this line by doing next and now my debugger will step over it no it doesn't step over okay it stepped into whatever that's also good so the issue bull is the issue I just created, but as you can see, it doesn't have an ID, so it's not persisted in a database yet. Uh, and then we can finish this function, and then it steps back into my, uh, my test. And now I can see the updates, they're empty. For some reason, the service does not uh, include any updates. So it would have been uh, useful if we would have done this. So let me just stop this test and run it again and step into the service execute. And that's the reason why the test did fail because it wanted to, it wanted to the key add label IDs from updates and that's an empty array so it, it failed or oh, that's a nil so it failed on that so next did step into next 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 <sighs> next comments so the first there's one comment in there and it uh it says copy metadata issue one let's step into the extract updates comment Let's step into the each and then next, next. What is the definition? You can print the value of that here. Copy, so that's that's a quick action for copy metadata. And you have to specify an issue or merge request. And the argument is issue one. So basically that should work. So why isn't it working? Uh, let's step into the execute of this definition. Is noob set? No, it isn't. Is available context? False. This. So uh, I, we have an exit here, I think, because it's not available. So step into the noob. Finish this because we're not interested in this step into available condition block. What's the value of that? It's set, so it's 
Um, next, context instance exec. Uh, so it will run the condition block to see if we can run this. And I think I've figured out why it's failing now because I probably don't have ac don't have access uh, to update the issue. So in this, the condition still is user can update the issueable, and that's probably failing in my test right now. As you can see, also this is false. So that's the reason why it didn't update uh, the issue. So it didn't run the, the com command and nothing happened. So my test is failing. So I need to specify, make sure that during running the test, uh, the user that is running the test is also able to update the issue. And it's uh, because this issue is pre-created, it's probably uh, in a project that the user has access, access to. So we have to look up and you see the issue is created in project project. And I'm building the issue somewhere else in a project that the user does not have access to. So now I'm adding here that the, the issue we are building, so not persisting in the database, belongs to this project. And in that case, I'm pretty sure my test will succeed now. So let's move over and uh, run this again. Hooray, this succeeds. So now we can also um, check when we revert our code, run the test again. Now we'll see that the test will fail because um, it was succeeding previously, but now because it didn't have uh, access, <coughs> sorry, because it didn't have access to update issues. So now it will fail because um, there, because the condition is not met. The issuable is, per, is not persisted, and we are testing if it should work without being persisted, so that fails. Um, let me see if everything is okay right now. So we have made our chains. Uh, let me revert along. Now we want to submit this uh, to GitLab. So we have GitLab git status. Oh. We can git add those, git commit. Oh, I have to set my username on my email. Sorry about that. So git commit, why the commit message, allow, copy, uh, data, data for new issues. Uh, it's easy if you also, when you do this, you also, uh, the issue again, uh, copy in the link of the issue. So closes. And we create a commit. Uh, so the commit is created. Let's go back to our source tree. Um, one thing, one thing I didn't do yet uh, in my oh, this one is on Git. I've closed it. I think. Oh no, I didn't. So set up GDK. Sorry. So that one command over here to create at the upstream remote. I didn't do yet on this command on this uh, repository. So if you see git remote b, okay, yeah, in this case it's already set. But when I would run, no, when I would run the command over here, git remote minus. 
so you can see the upstream is being set, the fetch upstream, but not the push upstream because normal GitLab uh, outside comp contributors don't have push access. So you can push to there. And I have to yeah, cheat a little bit. Um, so for my, uh, my fork was created, so copy. Uh, because I've been speeding up things a bit, uh, things are so back to uh, back to my code. So this is what you would usually get. So your username with GitLab CE and the upstream is GitLab or GitLab CE. So I will be pushing git push uh, current branch to origin. Uh, origin don't copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I want to use git for this. Uh, like this. No, that, no, not right. That surely change you don't need to make, so sorry about that. Yeah, running Rubocop, that's uh, a, a hook I've added to my Git uh, pre-push to ensure all, all the files match with, uh, with our Rubicop guidelines. But CI will also running those for you, so don't need to worry about that. So when you've pushed your code, you can create your merge request. And on the CLI, we create a link to that just so, just so you can open that link. Uh, so let's go over here. And this creates pre-fills in uh, the merge request title and then we subscribe here. Uh, this no name. If possible to use copy meta data when you are creating a new issue or merge bit. Uh, basically, specify over here the link of the issue closes this one. So let's assign it to me right now and remove the source branch when we create it. Uh, you probably also want to check this box um, if you want. Oh, let me just edit it. Sorry, it was a bit too quick here. So this checkbox um, is convenient for the merge request coaches when they have small changes to want to do to your, uh, your fork uh, with this checkbox. Those, the, the coaches can submit uh, changes to your fork um, to speed up the, the, the process of getting things merged. And then this is your risk request. It's created against GitLab or GitLab CE. It closed the issue, so it's detected when you, when you specify, specify it like this, it's detected that when the merge request is merged, it will close this issue. Um, over here are a few acceptance criteria. Um, so the change log entry, and that's something we really want to encourage people to do, and just visit the link here, uh, is to specify, is to tell like uh, what the change is, which merge request was, and who you are. So for this, we have a convenient command, and it should be over here, bin change log. And you can run that uh, locally. So let's do that. Bin change log. Um, 
that does work, so you have to provide a title. Uh, let me just copy the title over. Copy. Better put it on MRs. Better put it between quotes. And then it will ask you what the category is. Um, I consider this uh, feature change. Oh, so we even this not working. Why again? Oh, sorry, there's something wrong with my terminal at this point. Um, in change log. I so, created my change log entry uh, over here, but it doesn't specify a merge request. So you want to add the merge request uh, link there also. So copy the file, edit it. Merge request, you need to copy that uh, from the merge request we created. And basically, you probably you want to also fill in your name here. What I usually do then uh, at this point is hit status, it's new change log, hit edit, so git commit with amend. So it updates previous commit and adds this change to it. You can preview the commit message. Go back here, and then it. Then you want to force push uh, git push or uh, origin force with please. That's, that's what's happening. It was pushed. That requires the page. So it changes here. So we have. We have uh, the change over here. We have a change log entry, and we have a test. Yeah, my editor edited edit this, but don't worry about it right now. So for these changes, now we have pipelines running. Yeah, we can we can stop the old pipeline because you only need the the latest one, and it will run all the tests for you. So um, you can see later on if those tests did fail. So I guess uh, we can. Continue, complete this one. Documentation, uh, like I said, we have a session about documentation later on. Um, you might want to check if there's documentation about the uh, copy metadata command. So let's go to doc and just search for copy metadata. User quick actions. It doesn't really say if it enabled or not enabled for um, new uh, or new messages. So there's no need to change the documentation at this point. So we can check this one. We already added the test, so that's good. Uh, code review, review guidelines. I encourage you to skim through them to see if you do fine. But with these changes, it's OK. Merge request, the same style. Um, style guidelines are enforced by Rubicop if you're talking about the Rails part. So um, CI will complain about those. And we didn't make database changes, so this is good. So basically, you have a finished merge request at this point, and you just have to find someone to review this. Um, now, David, I'm not sure how we are encouraging people to uh, find the merge request coach. Do we have that documented somewhere? Sorry, I was uh, I was uh, just trying to unmute myself. So uh, first of all, we've got a we've got a session uh, tomorrow uh, on introducing merge requests. Um, we do have um, we do have a place we direct people to. Um, it's the uh, when they're trying to get in uh, in touch with the match request uh, coach. Um, so let me see. Uh, it's about uh, gitlab.com uh, jobs uh, minus families slash merge merge slash request coach. 
Um, so what I would recommend is um, uh, if you guys have uh, looked at the um, uh, at the um, kickoff session, uh, we've talked about them and uh, we've got the, those URLs in the in the links. Um, I've just uh, pasted through Slack to uh, Tony to you, um, so you can yeah, exactly that's the page. Uh, so that that tells you what uh, what the uh, uh, um, merge uh, request coach is, what they do, and then if you go to the uh, to the team page of GitLab, then uh, we generally ask you to uh, to search for merge request coaches, and um, and essentially you can get to see who they are and you can ping them by by person. Yeah, essentially, we uh, you can just search for merge request coach, and then um, you can ping any of them on the issue. Correct. So Remy would be Remy would be uh, would be one of them. Um, correct. And then if you click on the on the names of uh, of each one of them, then you'll see their hand their GitLab handle. Oh. On, if you click on the GitLab icon, then uh, you'll see their GitLab handle, and you can add that um, um, their handle on the on the merge request that will ping them essentially. It would be really convenient if we have a drop down over here for the merge request. Code. Absolutely, yeah I'll, yeah. I'll file a merge request for that. That would be really convenient for a contributor to find cool. one. Excellent. Yeah. But basically, that's it for my point. Uh, I'll stop sharing now, and I'll open to any questions at this point. I'm just just within the hour. I didn't expect it to take this long, long, but it was a bit of iteration on finding the right way to write the test. So that's good, I guess. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I'll uh, have one quick question um, myself. Let me just uh, just check if there's there isn't any right now on Kitter. Um, is there anyone uh, here in the session who have questions for Tom? Okay. So I think as a as a wrap up, um, I mean there was quite a lot of content, and, and to me it was really easy to see. I've learned actually myself quite a lot uh, in seeing what you were doing. Um, but could you perhaps give us a summary of the steps uh, in doing this whole workflow, starting from um, installing the GDK uh, until you have submitted the, the, mesh, the mesh request? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so basically, for GDK, the instructions are in the readme how to set up GDK. Basically, it's just run GDK install. Um, that's the short version of it. After you have GDK installed, you can run it with GDK run. And when that is launched, um, you can browse your GitLab on your local host on port 3000. From that point, your, your GDK is running, and you have GitLab running on your local machine. Then you want to start hacking an issue. And yeah, probably the hardest part about this is finding the right piece of code where you want to contribute. Um, for the issues that are mar marked with the label accepting merge requests, those are most of the time pretty well defined uh, how you can contribute to those. So what are changes should be? So normally the, the people who has labeled it has made sure that it's easy to find them. If not, please ping them, it's no problem to ask for questions on that point. So then you just start writing code, uh, making the changes in, in where you want to. Uh, you probably also want to write tests on that, uh, especially for backend code, it's pretty, uh, pretty convenient to do that. Um, you commit the changes, um, push them to your fork, and create a merge request. And from that point on, it's, let's hope uh, some of the merge request codes just take over to help you further with it. As like David said in the beginning of the session, uh, don't hesitate to ask early uh, for merge request coaches uh, to help you out. If you're stuck with something or you're not sure about the direction you want to go with, with some change, please ping someone uh, and we'll be happy to help you out on that. Excellent. So I think um, unless there are any more questions, we can wrap it up here and have it nicely fitted 
to nearly one uh, one hour. Uh, so again, uh, thanks a lot, Tone. Uh, that was really really good. Um, I'll be uploading the, the recording to YouTube and share the link uh, with you guys on the wiki page for the hackathon. And uh, with that, um, just a reminder that we've got the next session in a few hours' time. Uh, that's going to be. Uh, sorry. Uh, so that's going to be documentation with uh, Mike Lewis. Uh, and um, yeah, so looking forward to that and uh, looking forward to seeing you there. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone. And uh, have a nice hackathon. Bye bye.